Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Do I know you? If this week's review had been released under its original title of Crash Out, then we probably wouldn't be looking at it. But someone came up with a better title. Which, nearly 50 years later, caught the eye of producer Neil Moritz and a franchise was born. The Fast and the Furious was Roger Corman's first production for the company that became AIP, where he made his name. But here, he's just producing and doing a bit of driving for fun. In fact, this predates Corman's directorial debut. What's the pitch? The plot is simple. Race car driver Connie Adair is on her way to a big cross-country race when she gets mixed up with wanted murderer Frank Webster. Where do you think you're going? Mexico. He kidnaps her. I like quiet women. Stay that way. But the police are on their trail, so they enter the race, which passes through Mexico, to get Frank across the border. They can't prove you're innocent running away. I can't prove it dead. Decent plot, and Connie is a strong lead, even if she's somewhat undercut by the script. Guess you hadn't heard. They uh, had a meeting last night. This course is too dangerous. All lady drivers are banned. Problem number one, ironically, is the pacing. Going someplace? This is a road movie, but in between the police chase at the start... <laughs> ...and the race at the end, it's a road movie that stalls for 20 minutes which is a big chunk of a 73-minute film. I'm also running out of patience. During this time, the inevitable love story develops, but that's problem number two. I not only hate you, I dislike you. I'd call that a reasonable attitude toward the man who kidnapped you, and... <laughs> not cool, but even early on, Connie's animosity fluctuates wildly. Well, at the moment, the only thing I have against you is I never got that egg salad sandwich. Connie is an astronomically forgiving woman. But now, more inevitable, it turns out that Frank is wrongly accused. And one of his drivers tried to run me off the road. All I was trying to do was keep from getting killed. Minutes later... When she thought he was guilty, Connie was flirting like crazy. Won't you come into my parlour? In the 1950s, that was a green light. But now she knows he's innocent, she tries to escape. Just let go of my arm. I'll break it for you if you try any more tricks. Just because he's not a killer doesn't mean he's not a dick. Exercise is good for your figure. There's nothing wrong with my figure. I've noticed. But with that sort of chat-up line, it's only a matter of time. Why should I try to convince you that... I love you. <laughs> sure you do. I don't like the Stockholm Syndrome being turned into romance, but if there was something bringing them together, I might buy it. Earlier in the film, during qualifying, they share this moment in the heat of the race. <laughs> oh, wow! That works! But then the action stops so they can fall in love. Except that by stopping the action, there's no longer a mechanism for them to fall in love. You don't even trust me, do you? Any reason why I should? The love story should be moving with the race, not separate from it. You can do better than that. Then there is the race itself, which is a mixture of real footage... Just a second, the glass picks up, it's all right. ...and dodgy rear projection. <laughs> which doesn't always sync up, but you kind of expect that. Here's the real problem. He's racing, which is what we want to see, but makes no sense. All Frank needs to do is get to Mexico. It doesn't matter if he's coming last. And that's problematic because we're watching a race, but have no investment in the outcome. making it very difficult for himself. And almost kills another driver.
Now of course this happens so he can save the driver and show us he's not such a bad guy, he's worthy of the girl he kidnapped and whose arm he threatened to break, and whose heart he will now win with a typical B-movie chat-up line. Besides, I'm in use to you. Oh, Frank. This is in some ways typical Roger Corman. Budget is an issue. You want to take my money? But really all it needed was a second draft of the script. Interested? That wasn't so much a review as a tutorial, but for better or worse, you can learn a lot from Roger Corman. Well, good evening. Thanks for watching. For more Roger Corman film reviews, click here. What bad movies can teach you a lesson about the good ones? Let us know in the comments below. Well, I had to turn everything upside down, but I finally found... Well, where is everybody?